that you've been hacking away at your backend application and now it's time to deploy. Congratulations. Let me show you the easiest way to deploy your Node.js application. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a deployment with Docker, Docker Compose, Caddy as the web server, and we're going to deploy our application on DigitalOcean. Note that you'll need Docker installed to follow along with this guide. Let's start by creating our Docker file. Come into your application, create a new file, and call it Docker file with a capital D. The Docker file is responsible for creating the image, and from the image, we can start a container. Let's say from node colon 14. And this is going to use node version 14 as our base image. If you want to use a different version of node, use a different version here. So if you wanted to use 16, for example, you would say node 16. Next, we're going to move our package JSON into a temporary directory so we can use yarn to install. So I'm going to say add package.json to slash temp slash package.json. I'm going to add my yarn lock file. If you're using npm, you will have a npm lock file. I'm going to add yarn.lock and I'm going to add this to my temp directory, so slash temp slash yarn dot lock. I'm going to remove my build directory. If we have a look in my package.json here, you can see build is going to run TSC. And then if we look in the TS config file, you can see we're going to build to a build directory here. So I'm going to run a command to remove that directory to make sure we get a fresh install every time. So I'm going to say run rm, that's rf, build. Run just means run a command. rm means remove. And RF means remove it recursively. So remove all folders and files inside of this directory here. I'm going to run another command. So I'm going to run CD into our temp directory and yarn install. So we're going to change directories to this temp directory here. And we're going to run yarn install. And this is going to install our dependencies. I'm going to add dot slash and slash source. And this is because we have a source folder here. I'm going to run another command. So I'm going to say run rm minus rf source slash node modules. And I'm going to copy the node modules from our temp directory into our source directory. I'm going to create a working directory. So I'm going to say work dir slash source. I'm going to run our build command. So yarn, so run yarn build. If you're not using TypeScript, you won't need to run this build command here. And finally, once our build command has run, we can run our Node.js application. So I'm going to say cmd and I'm going to create an array and I'm going to add node as the first command. And then node is going to run our app.js. It's going to be inside build source slash app.js. So this is our Docker file complete. We could build this image and then run that image, but I'm going to create a Docker compose file because I find that much easier to build our images and run our images in containers. So let's create a new file. I'm going to call this docker compose.yml. I'm going to give this a version of 3.7. And this is the version of docker compose to use. And we're going to have some services here. So I'm going to say services. And the first service we're going to have, I'm just going to call this REST API. Secondly, I'm going to give this a container name. So I'm going to say container underscore name. And I'm going to call this REST API. You can call this whatever you like, as long as these match. And there will be some other places throughout the tutorial where this will need to match as well. I'm going to give this a restart unless dot. 
So our container is going to restart unless we explicitly stop it. I'm going to tell Docker Compose to set an environment variable. So I'm going to say environment. And I'm going to give this one environment variable and we're going to say node env. And I'm going to set this to production. If you want to set some other environment variables in here, you can do that as well. But I'm going to use this .env file and I have config for some default config. When you run your application with the node env set to production, config is going to use this production file here. So we can say export default, and we can have some environment variables here. Otherwise, we can set our environment variables here in custom environment variables, and then we can set these in our .env file. So I'm going to give this a property of build. Then I'm going to say context is going to be our root directory. And for now, I'm going to expose our port. And this is just going to be for demo purposes. So I'm going to say ports. And I'm going to expose port 1337 because our application is going to run on 1337. And I'm just going to expose that to the same port. So now let's try this out. So to run your docker compose file, you need to run docker compose up and you can run this in detached mode with dash D. I'll run it in normal mode. So it's going to tie up our console. And if we exit our console, it's going to exit the container. So, so the version of docker compose is invalid. It should be a string and we need to wrap this in quotations it again and I've misspelled restart here so you can see here that it's going to build our image I already have the node.js image downloaded but if you don't it will download it for you so we've got some logs here and if I open up our docker dashboard you can see here we have our rest API tutorial updated and we have our REST API, and here you might not be able to see it, but you can see that it's exposing port 1337. If you go back to our logs here, you can see it could not connect to our database. And the reason that it couldn't connect to our database is because if we have a look in default, it's looking for localhost for a MongoDB instance. And of course, in our Docker container, we don't have a MongoDB instance. So the easiest way to do this is to use Mongo Cloud Atlas and connect to an external database. You can create an instance of MongoDB inside of your Docker Compose and connect to that, but I find that to be a little bit more complicated. So I have a database connection string already. So I'm going to paste this into my .env file. And don't worry about trying to connect to this database because before I release the tutorial, I will have deleted this connection. So let's try to run our container again. So you can see here, we couldn't connect to the database again. So let's run this with a dash dash build. And this is going to rebuild our image. So you can see it's going through the build process again. You can see here our database is now connected and our application is running. So let's send a curl request to localhost port 1337 slash health check. And we should expect this to return with OK. So let's curl HTTP localhost 1337 slash health check. And we get back a 200 OK. So if you'd like to run your container in detached mode, you can do docker compose up and you can do dash D. So you can see now it says ret API is up to date and our terminal is usable again. So if you come into the Docker dashboard, you can expand the container here. 
And if you want to enter the command line, you can click here and it will open a command line interface that is inside of your Docker container. So that is the Docker component finished off. Now let's configure Caddy. And Caddy is going to be our web server. So if you're using Caddy, you won't need to configure any SSL certificate yourself, and you won't need to use anything like Nginx or Apache. So let's add another service to our Docker Compose. So I'm going to collapse our REST API service here. And I'm going to call this one Caddy. And the image is going to be Caddy slash Caddy version 2.2.1. And we're going to be using the Alpine version, which is just going to be a little bit smaller. Our container name is going to be caddy service. Our restart, spelt correctly this time, is going to be unless stopped again. And we're going to expose some ports here. So I'm going to expose ports and we're going to expose port 80. And we're going to use port 80 for that port. And we're going to do the same for port 443. So I'm going to say 443. 443 and port 80 is of course for HTTP connections and 443 is for HTTP or TLS connections. So we're going to add some volumes here as well. So I'm going to say volumes and I'm going to say dollar sign pwd slash caddy file and we're going to be creating this caddy file in just a moment. Okay, etc slash caddy slash caddy file. pwd slash site colon slash srv caddy underscore data colon slash data and caddy underscore config colon slash config. Now we need to add these volumes. So I'm going to say volumes. I'm going to add caddy underscore data. And I'm going to add caddy underscore config. So now let's create this caddy file here. Inside our root directory here, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this caddy file. So you'll need to know what your domain is going to be. Mine is going to be restapi.snipped.io. And this is just a domain that I have lying around. And I'm going to use this REST API subdomain to open up some curly brackets. And we're going to use a reverse proxy. So I'm going to say reverse underscore proxy REST API. 1337. So this is our container name, and this is the port that that container is exposing. And I'm going to add a header here, and I'm going to add this header because it's going to help us get an A plus for our TLS check, and I'll show you that at the end. So I'm going to say header down strict transport security max age equals three one five three six thousand and we'll terminate that line so again you'll need to use your domain here and if you've used a different port you will need to use a different port here and if you've called your container something other than rest api like I've called mine REST API here, you will need to rename this portion as well. So before we go create our DigitalOcean droplet, I'm just going to show you a little trick that was mentioned by someone in our Discord. And if you have a look down here, Sib Webworks has told us that if you don't want to format your private and public keys onto one line, you can base64 encode the keys instead. And then you can use this buffer dot from base64 to string. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you come into config, 
I'm just going to grab at this public key and I'm just going to Google base 64 and code. And this is going to get a decoder that I can use in the browser. I'm going to encode this into a string. Then I'm going to come into our environment variables here and I'm going to say public key is equal to our string. And then I'm going to do the same here for the private key. You need to make sure this public and private key are in the custom environment variables. So you can see I only have private key here. So I'm going to add my public key. And I've called this public key. And we can remove this here. So now if we come into where we're using those keys, I'm going to come into utils and JWT utils. And you can see here we have private key and it's going to be config.get and we're going to get our private key and our public key. So now when we get these keys, they're going to be base64 encoded strings. So we just need to decode those strings. So let's wrap this in buffer.from. And then the second argument here is just going to be base64. And then we're going to call dot two string. And this is going to take one argument and it's going to be ASCII. So let's do the same thing for our public key. So I'm going to say buffer from base64 dot two string and we're going to use ASCII. Let's console log these keys and we can see what they look like. So I'm going to use mpx kill port 1337 to kill our application that's running on port 1337 and this is going to crash docker. The easier way would be to go into Docker and stop the application. So now let's run yarn dev. And you can see here in our console, we get our keys and they're formatted correctly. So you can see here we have our private key and our public key. So that's a nice little trick. So let's push all of our code up to GitHub. And I'm going to add my .n file to git ignore. I'm going to come over to DigitalOcean and I'm going to click create droplet. And if you don't have a DigitalOcean account, you can use my affiliate link that I'll post in the description below and you'll get some credit for that as well. And I'll get some credit. So that would be really nice. So you can create an image from scratch if you like using any Linux distribution, but I like to come over to the marketplace and just use an image that has Docker pre-installed. So if you come here, you can click Docker and I just want a regular Intel SSD and I can get that $5 a month. Then I'm going to choose the location that's closest to me. So I'm going to click Singapore. So for authentication, I highly recommend using SSH keys. And you can generate those SSH keys. If you click new SSH key, it'll give you all the instructions here. It's really simple. And this is by far the most secure way to connect to your server. However, I am very lazy and I'm just going to use a password because once I finish recording this video, I'm just going to destroy this server. So I'm going to paste my password in here. And I'm going to create a name for my droplet. I'm just going to call this REST API tutorial. And you can add some tags if you like, enable backups, and I'm going to click create droplet. So while your droplet is creating, come over to your domain provider. I'm using Namecheap and you can click advanced DNS. In your provider, it may look a little bit different if you're not also using Namecheap. And we need to add a new record here. So I'm going to click add new record and it's an A record that we want to add. So the host that I'm going to use has to match what I put in the caddy file. So I'm going to put rest API. And then in IP address, we need to wait for our DigitalOcean droplet to be created. And we can copy the IP address from there and put it in this IP address field here. 
then my droplet has finished creating here and I can click copy and come over, paste in the IP address and click the little tick here. Don't forget to click that little tick. When I put a domain in here before, I forgot to do that and I was wondering why my domain name wasn't pointing to my droplet for quite a long time. So now we can connect to our droplet. So I'm going to come back to VS Code and I'm going to open a new terminal. You can use any terminal you like. I usually use iTerm, but I think VS Code is just a little bit easier to see in the videos. So I'm going to say SSH root at, and then I'm going to paste in the IP address from DigitalOcean. And because I'm using a password, it's going to ask me for my password and we need to allow this fingerprint. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to paste in my password. And we're now connected to our droplet. So the first thing we need to do is to install Git so we can clone our repository. So I'm going to say apt get update. And this is just going to update Linux's package repository. And I'm going to say apt get install. Once Git is installed, we can clone our repository. So I'm going to come over to GitHub and we can click code. I usually clone over SSH, but unless you have the keys installed, it's not going to let you do that. So I'm just going to use HTTPS. So I'm going to cd into slash var. I'm going to create a directory called www. So, so I'm going to say mkdir www. I'm going to cd into www and I'm going to say git clone and I'm going to paste in the link to the GitHub repository. That's ls to make sure we have our folder here. So you can see here we have REST API tutorials. So I'm going to cd into REST and I'm going to create a .env file. So you can use vim if you like, but I'm going to use nano. I'm going to say .env. And I'm going to grab the .n file that I created before. I'm going to get all the contents of this. And you can put whatever you like in here. Just again, make sure they're in your custom environment variables. So I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to press Command X. I'm going to save this. Now we need to run git pull in case we have any changes and we need to run docker compose but i'm very lazy so i would rather just run one command so i'm going to create a new file i'm going to pull, call this deploy.sh i'm going to say number exclamation mark slash bin slash bash and this is just saying that we're going to run this script with bash i'm going to echo out pulling and this is just going to print to the console. Then I'm going to run the command git pull. Then I'm going to echo build building application. You can say docker compose up minus t because we want it to run in detach mode and we want it to rebuild every time as well. So let's push this script. So I'm going to say b deploy script. So now I've pushed that script, I can say git pull. And we should see this script pull in here. Yeah, so you can see deploy.sh. So if we try run this deploy script, we're not going to have permission to do that. So I can say dot slash deploy.sh and it says here permission denied. So we need to mod the permissions on this script so we can execute it. So I'm going to say chmod u plus x deploy.sh. Now let's try run that script again. So dot slash deploy.sh. And you can see here we get pulling already up to date. And now it's saying that our Docker Compose is invalid. So inside of caddy service, it says port. Do you mean ports? So let's have a look at our Docker compose file. And here we say port when we actually mean ports. 
And while we're here, we can remove this port here because we don't need to expose that one. So let's say fix addy ports. And then the beauty of this deploy script is it's going to pull for us. So we can just run the deploy script again. You can see it's pulled the changes here and it now it's building out our image for us. So you can see here that it's created two containers for us, Caddy Service and REST API. If we say Docker PS, it's going to list the containers we have running. So this is a little bit hard to see here, but you can see we have a container ID here. Starts with 1A and its image is REST API tutorial. And we have some other stuff here as well. And you can see it was created 12 seconds ago. So if you want to view the logs for this, you can say docker logs and then the container ID. So you can see here that our app is running and our database is connected and we have our docs available. And it says here that it's available on 1337 and that's because that's the internal route. And so Caddy is going to reverse proxy that for us. So let's go see that in action. So I'm going to come to a new browser. I'm going to say rest API snipped.io and you can see here we have a cannot get slash and that is looking promising so let's go to health check and you can see and you can see here we get back an okay so that looks really good and if we click on the little padlock here you can see that we have a secure connection so let's go test this SSL certificate so if you come over to SSL Labs, you can paste in your host name and click Submit. And this test will take a while to run, but it's going to check a bunch of different security things for you. So with just a little bit of configuration, thanks to Caddy, SSL Labs has awarded us an A plus for our SSL certificate. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and you subscribe. Make sure you turn notification bells on so you get notified whenever I release a new video. And if you'd like to ask any questions or make any suggestions, please make sure you've joined the Discord server. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.